Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Urban Legends video. Once again, I'm sharing some encounters here from the UrbanLegendsOnline.com website. Three of them to be specific. All three of them having to do with some creepy encounters with some various insects or animals out there in this world. It goes to show that you can't be too careful when it comes to what you're doing because at any point whatsoever, you could have an interaction such as the ones that I'm about to describe here. One of them has to do with some encounters with spiders while sunbathing. The other one has to do with an encounter with uh, an, ins an insect, in other words, but in this case, it was from someone journeying home. And then the final one has to do with an encounter with a snake. And this is a snake that apparently tried to make its home within someone else's home. So without further ado, let's go ahead and let's share all three of them here. The first one is called Sunbathing Spiders. Next one is called Shut Your Trap. Last one is called Say by the Vest. And as always, I'll give my own thoughts and opinions on each of them as as well let me know what you guys and gals think so sunbathing spiders here's how this one goes a young woman was sunbathing on the beach and was just about to drop off to sleep when she felt an insect running along her jawbone and then down her neck she brushed it away and thought nothing more of it after about a week she noticed what she thought was a pimple growing and growing the skin was inflamed and it looked like a blister then one day she was blow drying her hair and hit the inflammation flame spot with her hair dryer. The blistered skin broke open and hundreds of tiny white baby spiders and pus came pouring out of the womb. It seems that while she was sunbathing, her pores had enlarged enough that a mama spider could deposit her egg sac in one. They incubated under her skin until she smacked herself in the jaw with the hair dryer. And then that's it. That's everything associated with this short encounter called sunbathing spider. So let's talk about that here. Once again, this one falls under that theme that you have an insect or something else burying under your skin and then it grows and then it pops out. In fact, one of the other urban legends that I'll talk about here in a moment is very similar. But in this case, it has to do with apparently a young woman who was sunbathing. I don't know about the a realistic tone of this like I don't know if your pores can truly grow that large when you're sunbathing so that an insect can basically put something within those uh, spores but either way though it seems like it's what happened if, if, if this situation is to be true then that's what occurred and then later on she had these hundreds of tiny white baby spiders come out of her pores or her skin from those pores and then that was it she was having the uh, nightmare of a lifetime basically right then and there again i don't think that this is a hundred percent true um, i have heard variations of it and i've shown them in the past as well how things can be buried. And it's true. You can actually look online on YouTube. You'll find plenty of examples of, of doctors and others pulling out these ugly looking larvae from someone's skin because it's burrowed under their skin for who knows how long. So it can happen, but I just don't think that it can occur in this situation. But who knows? That's why, again, it's called an urban legend. Next one is shut your trap. And here's what it says. There was once a man that fell asleep on his journey home from work on the last train of the day. It had been a particular humid day and many people had used a train and left the windows open. Flies flew in and out of the carriage. As the man fell into a deeper sleep, he lay still with his mouth open, gently snoring. Suddenly, a fly flew into his mouth and down his throat, waking him. Suddenly, he felt sick and stayed awake for the rest of the journey. As the days passed, he forgot about the incident but started to feel unwell. Several weeks later, a friend called to his flat to check if he was feeling any better as he had heard that he had not been into work. Upon entering the flat, he was sickened by a terrible smell and on entering the man's lounge found him dead on the settee with a large hole in his chest and maggots and flies swarming all over the room and his dead friend's rotten corpse. And then that's it. That's everything associated with Shut Your Trap. So let's talk about that here. Again, another urban legend where you kind of have to test its reality. If something goes into your mouth, presumably, like in this case, a fly or any other insect, and it goes all the way down, let's say, to your stomach, I don't think they're going to 
grow in there. If anything, they're just going to become food. You hear about that. In fact, I remember reading somewhere that the average person will swallow like several pounds of insects, whether it's spiders or flies or something else, because when you're sleeping, you leave your mouth open and stuff can go in. And so that's over the lifetime. That's essentially what happens. It's true. You can look it up. I remember reading about it somewhere. It's one of those facts that that is just going to occur. And then I hear about one time about guys on motorcycles, how they are in turn sometimes out there but without helmets. And they have uh, insects that smack their face all their time. And sometimes they go right into their mouth. And so here in this case, you would have, if this were true, you would have a lot more people with a lot more open holes in their chests and who knows what else flying out of it, if that's the case. But no, it's going to be, again, that the stuff just gets dissolved, the insects and so on. It's They just become food at that point. And then uh, there's nothing else really to that story. But it is an urban legend, so I wanted to share it here. Last one is called Save by the Vest. And here's what it says. While cooking dinner one night, Aunt G opened the cupboard. She intended to pull out some flour, but instead she received a nasty surprise. A python jumped out at her. She slammed the cabinet and with lightning speed, all 300 pounds of her made it down the street to a neighbor in less than 30 seconds. From there, she called the police. When the cops arrived on the scene, one of them opened that same cabinet. The snake again lashed out, but this time succeeded in making contact with the officer's chest. Luckily, however, it sunk its teeth into a mouthful of bulletproof vest. He then slung it to the ground, stepped on its head, and then chopped it off. After a brief investigation, it was discovered that the previous year, a neighbor had kept the python as a pet. It had gotten loose and they'd been unable to locate it until now. Let it be known that Angie's house spelled, smelled like some mothballs for the next month. And then that's it. That's everything associated with Saved by the Vest. So let's talk about that here. So in this case, you have a situation where apparently Aunt G had moved in. She had no idea that the previous neighbor had a python. Somehow that previous neighbor had left it there as well or did it on purpose. Who knows? But either way, though, that python was suddenly spending that entire time there in that cabinet until that fateful day when she opened it and then it lunged at her. Obviously, she was freaked out called the police, they came over, it did it again when they opened the cupboard, but it sank its teeth into the actual vest. Now, based on realities, you could see that happen, like if a vest can stop a bullet, it can surely stop something like this, right? And so anything involving the cop being harmed by this a python or anything else from it, it's going to be hard to say that that's, that that's true. Like, in other words, it's not going to be harmed. In other words, the cop. But at the same time, the idea that the snake can be there for that long, that's where another thing, and, and Angie doesn't know about it, that's where another thing where you kind of have to suspend reality. I do remember reading somewhere that when a snake eats, let's say, a giant animal, in this case, a python, eats a giant animal, swallows it whole, and then just sits there i read somewhere that it can last like a year is that right let me know but some of you that have these pythons as pets let me know apparently they can last a very long time without eating again and so if that's the case and the python ate some large animal and then it was just there resting in that corner in the cupboard i guess it could do that but otherwise let me know all right everybody thanks again as always take care bye